Crossover scripts can be very powerful and even more if you decide to host them online and to build web applications with them. Unfortunately, if you are new to Shapediver and you don't know all of our tricks and tips of optimization, you may hit some walls when uploading your models to our platform. And for this reason, in today's tutorial, we will share five things that you need to avoid when uploading your models to Shapediver. Before we get started, don't forget to like this video and to subscribe so that you don't miss any other video tutorials in our channel. So, let's get started! So in today's tutorial, to be able to explain these five things that you should avoid, we will take these classes and convert them in a very simple parametric model. We have right now all of the uh, poly surfaces, so let's start with the first thing to avoid. Don't forget to internalize your information, to internalize your geometry. So to bring this into Grasshopper, we will need to come here and write VRAP. Then we will get the VRAP primitive, then we can select. Um, let's just start with the couple of arms that we have. Okay, now let's say that we want to make this um, with multiple colors. So we are going to come to the Shape Diver plugin, come to the display component. So inside display, we have this one that is the display component. And then we will start with this one. That one will give us the arms. we want the users to be able to select the color of these areas. So we can use the Shape Diver Simple Material component. Then this one will come here. Then we are going to give the users to change the color. So we need a color swatch. Here in the Shape Diver Simple Material component, you can put a code. That means uh, the material that will be used in our servers, in our viewer. In this case, let's say that we want it to be glass, so that will be 400. And for the other ones, let's put it as plastic, so that will be 200. And now we have a very simple model that we could upload to Shapediver, where you just allow the user to change the color of this frame. Now, what we are missing here is that what happens if we remove all the geometry in Rhino. So let's say I take all the geometry in Rhino and I say delete. Then all of the sudden, my Grasshopper model is not working anymore because there is no geometry. Because all of the geometry that I had here in Grasshopper is reference from Rhino. And Shapediver just works with everything in Grasshopper. So that means that everything that you have as reference geometry needs to be internally in Grasshopper. So we come here and we say right click into this one and we add internalized data. So now if we come back again into Rhino and we delete again all of the geometry, nothing happens. Our model still works. So now we will upload this simple model to Shapediver and see how it looks. So now we have here our model, the same one that we had in Grasshopper. Now we have it ready here in Shapediver to be able to be used online. But as you can see here in the glass especially, you can see that there is a weird flickering of the surface. And this problem that we see here takes us to the second thing you should avoid. Don't forget to hide the geometry that you don't want to display. Here in Grasshopper, we forgot to hide these three objects here. So these three objects, as you can see, if we go right click, they still have preview turned on. These other ones that are the Shape Diver display components, if we go right click, they also have the preview on. So in Shape Diver, everything that has preview on gets displayed. So if we preview off these ones, so here I can preview off all of them, 
Now we are left with just these three pieces of geometry, which are the ones that will get displayed at Shape Diver. If we re-upload this model, this problem that we are facing right now will be immediately solved. Now let's go to the third thing you should avoid. Don't send nerves to Shape Diver. So nerves include um, all of these B-wraps, include surfaces, and also, for example, interpolated curves or control points curves. So you are able to send this kind of data to Shape Diver. So as you saw, we uploaded this model using B-wraps and it worked. There was no problem using it in Shape Diver. However, it's not optimal because when we need to render this geometry, when we need to display it in the viewer, we need the geometry to be meshes because that's the way that our graphic card is able to render and display our geometry. So even here in Rhino, if we take one of these um, B-wraps, polysurfaces, and we write what, then we get this window, which tells me what I have. So it tells me that I have a polysurface with 153 surfaces. And here at the end, you can see render mesh. So automatically, even Rhino is creating a mesh to be able to display, to be able to show it to us. So the same happens in any other viewer that you have online or offline. You need to have meshes to be able to display it because that's what our graphic card needs. So that means still we're able to take these B-wraps, but actually in our servers, we are automatically converting these B-wraps into meshes. So our recommendation is that you send directly meshes so that we can avoid this extra step, which takes extra computation time. So if we come here and we write mesh B-wrap, then that gives us this component. And with this component, we are able to easily convert all of our meshes into B-wraps. Now again, don't forget to hide all the geometry that you don't want to display. And now what about the curves? So here if we go into the curves tab, then we have splines, which include interpolated curves or um, nerves curves. So all of these ones you can also send to Shape Diver, but a similar process happens. At Shape Diver, we have a library of objects that we can use to reproduce the geometry online. So for example, you can reproduce easily a circle, an ellipse, a polyline, but all of the complex ones are more difficult to reproduce online. So you will be able to look at them, but it will take longer to process. So that's why if you have a complex spline, a complex nerves curve or interpolated curve, we recommend you to convert this curve into a polyline so that it can be easily reproduced online. Now let's bring these glasses to the next level of parametric design. Let's bring some pattern in the glass area. What can we use to create a pattern? So let's do a quick Google search and let's put pattern plugin grasshopper. And then we have here as plugin paraquet. It's a very new uh, plugin from 2021, from this year, as you can see here. So I already downloaded this plugin and I have it now here in Rhino. And I'm going to create a pattern in um, the glasses. So for that, I already have something prepared. So here in this little script, I am taking one of the um, glasses. We don't need two because they are the same, basically. And then I'm going to take the boundary of this surface, which would be just the outside. I put it in the plane, so in the XY plane, by using the base untrimmed uh, surface. And then I'm going to create a pattern in um, this base, um, base surface that is untrimmed. So for that, here I'm using just this plugin that we just found, Paraket. And um, here in Tiling, we can find this option that I have there, brick type A, so it's here. Then I create a pattern in this surface. I create an offset of this pattern 
and based on that offset i am able to create um, the area between my frame you can create a boundary surface here a loft here that give us this result that then we thicken and then we transform it back into our glasses so here we go from the planner one again to the um, surface one that go in our glasses and then we do finally the mirror that um, we can send to shape diver right now what we're gonna do is just to simply save this and upload it in shape diver and see what happens and oops that takes us to our four thing to avoid when using shape diver don't forget that in our servers not all of the plugins are installed not all of the plugins are supported so this new one that we found here paraket which is very new 2021 is still not supported in our servers the reason why we cannot support every single plugin is because we need to do a manual check-in of each of them because we need to make sure that they are stable enough that they have a good code that they are well coded and that they are able to work in an online environment there are some plugins that need of a local environment that means you need to access a local folder or they export local folders and then we need to adapt them to be able to work instead of a local folder you need to upload a file for example or you need to download a file which is different to working with local um, local information in your computer so because this plugin is very new then it is still not supported so what is supported what is supported in ship diver so here when you get this error if you ever get it we always give you here the link where you can directly go and check all the list of supported plugins in the platform there are already lots of them and the majority of them are the most used ones the most powerful ones. so if this happens ever to you probably there is a way to use either another plugin or even no plugin to solve the problem so for example what could be used here to replace this component here brick type a which is coming from paraket plugin and in that case we could go to launchbox and launchbox have some similar uh, patterns creation so if we go to panels we have also um, this even almost the same pattern random quad panels for example so let's go in this case for something different and let's go for hexagonal cells so it works very similar you give it a surface and then you give it um, the count in the u and v directions and then if we connect this to the offset let's see what happens now with our pattern and here in our output uh, in our shape diver display geometry component is that we arrive to our final five thing to avoid when using shape diver so right now as you can see here we have a data tree with three branches that are sent to shape diver as a data tree so the problem of doing this is that each branch represents a file a file that gets sent to the servers the shape diver servers and therefore here we're sending three files and therefore that means more computation times that is needed to transfer the data you don't want to do that unless you want each of these branches to have a different material Here, as you can see, I gave a different color for each of our branches. So in this case, we have the yellow for the frame, we have the blue for the pattern, and then we have a little part here, which actually doesn't make sense. And that's because that's coming from our boundary surface, which created two surfaces in this area, in this case. And the reason why it doesn't make sense is because in our case, in this example, we don't really need a material per branch. We just need a single material so I can just use one of these materials but then if I need just one of these materials then I don't need a tree I can flatten this and in this way instead of sending three files I'm sending a single file to shape diver the final grasshopper model of these glasses will be also available down in the description
And that's all for today. There is a few more things that we could talk about, but we will leave that for another video where we will talk about more things that you can easily avoid when using Shape Diver. I hope these five things that we reviewed today will help you out with using um, Shape Diver. I hope to see your models uploaded to Shape Diver. Remember, it is for free. You just have to go to app.shapediver.com and then there you will be able to just drag and drop your file or just select your file and put it um, online for anyone to be able to enjoy the power of Grasshopper. If you need more information, you can go to shapediver.com or you can check all of our social media channels, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. And I will see you in the next one.